adding integers with different signs. So there's a lot going on here. So uh, when we're adding on a number line, uh, to find the sum of integers with the same sign, such as 3 and 2, you can start at 3. Okay, start at 3 here. And then you move 2 to the right, okay, to arrive at 5. So they're modeling this addition problem on this number line. To find this right here, uh, 3 plus negative 2. Okay, so there's 3. So we start at the same spot here. You're starting at 3. But instead of going to the right here, you're moving to the left. You're moving in the negative direction. So that, that sign is telling you a direction. Okay, and you arrive at 1. And this would be interesting to see that 3 plus negative 2, that's the same thing as 3 minus 2. Because 3 minus 2 is also 1. So it's important to see that these two things mean the exact same thing. Okay, so we're going to start modeling this. And we have 4 plus negative 3. We start at 4. Okay, so I'm going to start at 4. I have my ruler because I like to make straight lines. And I'm going to move 3 units to the left. So I'm going to go uh, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to end right there. And I have that. 3 units to the left. And I arrive at 1. And by the way, that's the same thing as 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3 is also 1. So this and this are the same thing. Okay, model negative 7 plus 5. So you start at negative 7. And you move 5 units to the right because this is a positive here to the right. So start at negative 7. 5 units to the right. And I'm going to use my ruler. And I have... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm moving in this direction here, and I've arrived here. So to the right or in the positive direction, negative 7 plus 5 equals negative 2. Okay, we're going to model uh, 6 plus negative 6. So start at 6, move 6 units to the... Uh, let's see. So I start there and I have to move six units to the left. Or in the negative direction. So I start at six right there and I move six in the negative direction. And I have this. And I arrive at zero. So predict the sum of negative 2 plus 2 and explain your prediction. Well, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. If I have negative 2 here and use that number line and I have to start at negative 2 and I move 2 to the right, that means that I have arrived at 0. So right there. And I moved in that direction. That's what the arrow is for. And I arrived at 0. So there you go. On the back side. Ah, with different signs, and we're going to use counters. And if you recall from before, uh, the let's see, the orange is positive and the red is negative. And if we have a positive, one positive plus one negative, they add up to zero. And by the way, one plus negative one, that's the same thing as one minus one. And we know that that equals zero. So these two things are the exact same two statements. And this is called a zero pair, right there. Underline that, zero pair. Now, to model this, what we have oops, is uh, 3 plus 2. So I have 3. And, uh, you know, and sometimes we can look at this as money. If you have $3 and you owe $2. Well, I have 3. Right here, I, I have 3 and I owe two. But these two right here, they create zero pairs. They are removed. And my answer here is one. So I have one, uh, what's left? Uh, zero pairs. So you have a positive one counter. So the sum of three plus negative two is just one. And it's positive one. If it's negative one, I would put a negative, but I don't have to. It's positive. And also, if I have $3 and I owe $2, I'm going to have $1 left over. 
So let's see. We have modeling negative 6 uh, plus 3. You start with 6 uh, negative counters to represent negative 6. And instead of orange and red, I'm just going to have uh, negatives and positives. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I have three positive counters. Uh, add three positive counters to represent adding uh, three. So one, two, three. Now we have zero pairs here. One, two, three, zero pairs right there. And they are all going to go. Go, go, go. What's left over? I have three negatives. Three negative counters. So the sum of this is negative three. And you can think of this as money. If you owe six dollars and you have three dollars, then you're still going to owe three dollars in the end. Okay, so we are going to make a prediction. In this, Kyle uh, models the sum of two integers. He uses more negative, which is red counters, than positive yellow counters. What can you predict about the sign of the sum? Well, it's going to be negative because when Kyle forms zero pairs, there will be negative counters left over. Okay, so we have a few brief rules here to talk about and such as in this. When I have uh, five plus negative one, I imagine I have five, one, two, three, four, five positive counters and one negative counter. I have a zero pair, so I have four positive counters left over. If on this one I have a positive uh, counter and I have seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I have a zero pair, I have six negative counters left over. On this one, four, one, two, three, four positives and six negatives. One, two, three, four, five, six. All of these are zero pairs. And I have two negative counters left over. Negative two. Three positives. One, two, three, and four negatives. One, two, three, four. All these are zero pairs. And I have one negative left over. So it's negative one. So we can review our rules here. Uh, we, if we have the same sign, we're just going to add these up and the sign stays the same. If we have different signs, uh, we need to subtract the two numbers and we keep the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. 5 has a larger absolute value than 3, so it's going to be negative 2. 10 has a larger absolute value than 1, so the sign of the answer is going to be negative. And we have our additive inverse. An additive inverse uh, is a number that when you add it to each other, they make zero. So four negative four are additive inverses and 11, negative 11 and positive 11, those are additive inverses as well. And so that's what you got to know. Thanks for watching.